I'm Ernie Humphrey, Educational Programs Leader for Performative, the largest online community for corporate finance, accounting, treasury, and related professionals. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar, Simplifying Revenue Recognition with FinancialForce.com. Automating revenue recognition can save you valuable time, increase the visibility and accuracy of your revenue data, and eliminate the costly mistakes made when utilizing spreadsheets. Today, we'll experience a demo of Financial Force Revenue Recognition and discover how companies of all sizes are eliminating the need for complex spreadsheets by automating sophisticated revenue calculations, processing multi-element arrangements efficiently, effectively organizing items by projects, time cards, invoices, and expenses, and gaining a complete real-time picture of revenue to date, deferred and forecasted revenue by account, customer, project, region, and cost center. I would like to thank FinancialForce.com, whose commitment to thought leadership helps us make this webinar possible and delivered at no cost. A quick note on today's agenda, First, we'll experience a joint presentation, including a tech demo from our featured speakers. Then we'll move to the interactive Q&A session where we'll spend the remainder of our hour. We would like this to be an interactive experience for you. If you have any questions at any time, please go to the questions area and you go to webinar control panel and send us your questions. We can't promise to get them all in. We'll do our best and we'll follow up afterwards on any questions we do not get to today. A few logistical notes about the webinar, links to today's presentation and video recording the webinar will be sent out to all attendees within 24 hours of the event. Note this webinar includes a tech demo and as such is not eligible for CPE credit. Again, we encourage you to ask questions on today's topic via the questions box and you go to the webinar control panel anytime during the webinar. Finally, immediately find the webinar. We'll be asked to take a short survey regarding the webinar. We greatly appreciate your feedback as we always strive to improve the ROI we offer our event attendees for their valuable time. A quick word about Performative. Performative is the largest online community and resource for senior level corporate finance, accounting, treasury, and related leaders. Performative connects corporate finance leaders to provide instant advice and insights on the tough financial and strategic challenges they face every day. It's now my pleasure to introduce today's featured speakers, Claire Erskine, Solutions Specialist, FinancialForce.com. Claire has over 25 years' experience in the software industry, primarily in providing sales support for financial applications, from working with on-premise solutions at Ross Systems, PeopleSoft, and Oracle to helping launch Salesforce.com at the beginning of the SaaS revolution. She has acquired extensive knowledge of the issues facing organizations today, as well as the challenges in providing software and service solutions to the 21st century marketplace. Claire holds a BS in marketing from the University of Massachusetts. Our other featured speaker today is Michael Bryan, General Manager, Accounting Software Applications, FinancialForce.com. Mike has over 30 years of experience in a variety of senior management positions across finance, operations, sales, and products in the software and service industries. Previously, Mike served as the CFO for an employee benefit administration firm we oversaw the successful implementation of Salesforce CRM and helped grow the business 40% year over year for five consecutive years. Mike's experience lends him acute expertise in aligning strategy, technology, finance, and sales. Mike graduated cum laude from Southern New Hampshire University with a BS in accounting. With that, it is my distinct pleasure to hand the floor over to Mike. Mike, the floor is now yours. Please take it away for us. Thank you very much. Okay, Ernie, thank you very much and uh, welcome today. Folks, um, we look forward to the presentation. Uh, Claire will be doing a product presentation for you and, and as Ernie's introduction showed, uh, what's really amazing is not that she's spent 25 years in this industry, but that she's only 29 years old. <laughs> thank so, you, Mike. <laughs> today we'll take you through, uh, I'll take you through a few brief slides about Financial Force, uh, the company and the problem, uh, as we understand it, with revenue recognition. A little bit about Financial Force first off. Uh, we're an ERP software vendor, so we provide a full ERP solution that's native on the Salesforce One platform. And what's significant about that is now companies can not only uh, enjoy the benefit of ERP on a, a cloud-based solution that's supported by Salesforce, but you can combine that ERP activity with your front office CRM activity. So sales, customer service, um, back office, all of those applications now live on a single native platform. Um, and what we like to say is we conduct business at customer speed. So we support the entire customer journey. We're not just your back office ERP applications. Uh, that whole platform now is surfaced as a single view to the customer uh, and, and your employees know and understand the customer because they have that whole visibility to what's happening from 
inception from marketing reach out right through uh, the entire life cycle of the customer. And the, the uh, ideal and, and the, the opportunity here is to increase not only the bottom line but increase the top line. So more effective engagement with the customer leads to more revenue. Good ERP systems lead to better control, better spend management, better bottom line. So we think we've got a unique combination uh, in, in conjunction with the Salesforce platform that uh, really gives this product superior differentiation in the market. Uh, Financial Force is a joint venture between Salesforce.com and Unit 4. Um, we have over 300 employees now, actually. We're hiring and, and growing. Um, our annual revenue growth is uh, in excess of 85 uh, percent year over year. We're in 27 countries. We have users in over 45 countries and we're headquartered in downtown San Francisco, California. So today we're going to talk uh, specifically about the revenue recognition management feature uh, in Financial Force. And our engagement with our customers, our engagement in the marketplace led us to understand the extent of the manual processes and fragmentation. Now, revenue recognition applications are relatively new to ERP systems and a lot of ERP systems have embraced the functionality. Um, I think you're going to see a little bit about how we do it differently, but taking all of these element pieces uh, and the fragmented data, so our original contracts, our original opportunity, the, uh, the engagement management with the customer typically falls in a CRM application, Salesforce being the the leader in that market space. Not common to see our customers using Salesforce to capture that upfront order information. Um, invoicing happening either uh, manually through Excel or through a, a back office accounting system. And then that data being merged together and put into Excel. And Excel by far and large is the most popular revenue recognition tool in use today. Um, but Excel presents a myriad of challenges to companies. So there's weaknesses around control. Um, obviously, the the uh, the data can be updated without validation. So there's a lot of uh, inherent problems with it. it. It's a tremendously flexible tool. It serves the purpose beautifully. But if you're across that threshold of the size of your organization, it's time to start thinking about a way to get your revenue recognition, transactional information into a controlled secured environment. And Excel is a good starting point, but it's not the end point. And, uh, and today we want to show you what an integrated revenue recognition tool as part of your platform can do for you. So what we provide is an end-to-end -end process. Um, in, on the front end, the multi-element arrangements, um, whether they're captured in sales opportunities, captured in billing information and financial force accounting or in your own custom objects. We encounter a lot of customers that have built custom objects on the Salesforce platform to house uh, information about contracts and orders. Or a third party application, Aptis is a good example if you're using Aptis for contract management or an application similar to that. We can attach to that data. In conjunction, we have a PSA application. So if you're doing project management, customer service and delivery, and you're managing projects and doing uh, project accounting and revenue recognition associated with those projects. All of those elements of data can feed together into the revenue recognition engine and that information transitions to the accounting system. So you've got an end-to-end -end process, full audit trail, wrapped around an application that provides you with security, scalability, and, um, and, and the control mechanisms that you need to ensure that the proper internal controls are administered over this very sensitive area of operations. So we're going to transition into the demonstration. Claire is going to take you through a couple of different uh, scenarios and, uh, and use cases around the revenue recognition. We'll expand on some of these. We'll start off simple and expand on them as we go. And um, as Ernie said at the, at the outset, you know, we're happy to answer any questions that come up. I think once we get through the presentation piece, we'll transition to the question and answer. So feel free to enter your questions as we go, and um, we'll, we'll carve some time out at the end to address those. 
uh, when we get to the uh, when we get to the question and answer period. So, Claire, I'll turn it over to you, and you can take us through some live product. Great, thank you so much, Mike. Let's go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about initially what I thought I'd do is. Uh, what we're looking at right now is what I like to call our uh, revenue recognition control panel. And uh, Mike, as you said, we'll definitely go through several scenarios as you've outlined uh, with different, uh, essentially grabbing data from uh, different objects uh, on the platform. But maybe just to orient um, our, uh, our viewers today as far as uh, what they're looking at is uh, really controlling the whole process uh, through this uh, through this panel, and being able to uh, we're actually looking at uh, our first use case that we'll start out at. You'll see here at the top, kind of the uh, left hand side of my screen. I've got several tabs, and we'll take a look at each one of those as we go through and talk about these different use cases. The first one being, uh, as you said, we'll start with the probably the simplest one first with the sales invoice but being able to review and, and see all of uh, the data that's, uh, that's ready to go. So you'll notice I've got a, a recognition date, uh, the appropriate currency that I happen to be dealing with. Uh, you'll see actually, I've, uh, I'll just expand for a moment, but I've closed up here, filtering options. So depending upon the, the amount of data that I'm looking at, and as you said, we've uh, encountered a number of companies that, that have huge spreadsheets uh, and dealing with a tremendous amount of data for that. So being able to use filtering options to, uh, to narrow that uh, scope down and going through and doing the, uh, the recognition. And what we've got displayed here, and I can expand in this case, I'll just do this just for kind of taking a look and, uh, and showing what's there, uh, being able to expand and, and, and in this case look at all of the details um, of, uh, in this case, our addition sales invoices that we're uh, recognizing revenue on. Uh, it, what we're looking at initially, um, as, as you talked about, Mike, with, uh, in this case, being able to uh, recognize revenue, you'll notice that under uh, my template. Uh, so you described being able to really, the template is essentially the methodology that our clients can employ uh, in being able to recognize revenue. and. We'll see in this case, actually, let me close all these up and I'll just expand one of these for, for ease of, of viewing. Uh, you'll notice that I know completely exactly what's happened so far from, in this case, this particular sales invoice where I have the total revenue, uh, what's been previ previously recognized, uh, as well as uh, what I'm going to be recognizing this period. Now, some of the uh, options that enable you, obviously I've got uh, all of my uh, high-level data here, and but being able to, to drill into the details as need be. So going to the source data to really do any kind of a review. Uh, as you, as, you, know, you stated uh, up front, uh, you know, Excel is a great flexible tool, but as far as uh, control or auditability, uh, it really kind of goes out the window, but certainly something that we had in mind in building out um, our revenue recognition engine to be able to uh, accommodate and trace back uh, exactly not only what the source data was, but all those transactions that have taken place. So being able to hover if need be, and I can take a look and see a little more details about this particular sales invoice line, uh, in this case what the actual item was, and if need be, if I drill into the details of this, uh, you'll see down to um, kind of that next level of review and being able to take a look and see all of the transaction history, so all of the revenue that's been uh, recognized and committed up to this point, being able to, uh, with a hyperlink, just drill into the details for each one of these, as well as be able to, uh, to go into the actual uh, line item as well for this particular invoice. So in doing any kind of an audit or review, starting at our control panel and being able to drill back into that, uh, that source detail for any of our transactions. And then in conducting and going through and creating our revenue. So being able to select, if I select this particular invoice, 
you'll notice over here kind of in the mid mid right hand side of the screen that my create transaction and create transaction and commit buttons have now uh, become active so I've selected in this case one particular transaction uh, one invoice I can now just create the transaction and review it uh, to see if in fact uh, I want to go ahead and actually uh, commit it and you can see you also have an option as well to do both at the same time. So depending upon what an organization's uh, process they wish to employ, the ability to, uh, to, to really kind of go a couple of different paths to do a, a final review, a final, final review before actually uh, committing those transactions and cre uh, creating the entries that you would then use to post uh, to the ledger. And in this case, with our sales invoices, uh, you can see here we're uh, essentially uh, just doing uh, an equal split. And as you mentioned, it can be equal by, by months, by days. So essentially that, that straight line uh, revenue recognition uh, available for that. Anything else you wanted to, uh, to mention here on the, on the sales invoice side, Mike? I think just if you could maybe share with the audience quickly how we can use platform services like approvals to make sure that those sales invoices get set up initially for, uh, for, the, for the revenue recognition methodology? Oh, absolutely. Uh, so certainly taking advantage. Actually, let's go ahead and we can open up and review the details of the, uh, the sales invoice uh, itself. So being able to uh, use the, uh, the workflow and approval engine on the platform. So being able to uh, put our invoices through an approval process to be able to, uh, to validate, make sure that uh, the line items are in fact set up as appropriate. And even if I drill into the details here, you can see here I've got my, uh, my template. I have all of my appropriate flags checked for revenue recognition, start and end dates, and be able to employ the platform approval processes to in fact make sure that uh, the invoices uh, are correct and to, uh, to push them through in a, an approval process before, in fact, they even get to the revenue recognition step. And I think that would include you know, uh, the, the opportunity to use the embedded chatter feature in Salesforce, which is a much richer tool than just an instant messaging tool, but you can embed actions and approvals in that chatter, that chatter flow. So while you can engage in an interactive instant message discussion, those discussions can take on more important context to have things like uh, an actual approval button. That, so maybe it's got to go to the, uh, the revenue team for approval, and they have to action their approval, which gets recorded as part of that, uh, that feed and becomes a permanent audit record of the transaction. So great ways to take advantage of, you know, of being on the Salesforce platform for us, for being on the Salesforce One platform is now we get to take advantage of these rich utilities that come with the platform, but we don't have to spend precious development dollars building those type of utilities. We can just leverage what Salesforce has made available on the uh, Salesforce One platform to do that. Exactly. Great point, Mike. And I just went back to that sales invoice and expanded my chatter feed. I, I do have uh, one update, in fact, that I, uh, that I changed the due date. So you can see here's a good example of... Uh, the ability to have automatic chatter posts, essentially. So uh, maybe not necessarily kind of that dynamic conversation that you can have uh, about a particular transaction, but even having automatic updates happen that whoever would be following uh, this transaction would see that, in fact, I changed the due date. Uh, so to be, uh, to be notified of that uh, as, uh, as, as, part of the, uh, as part of the collaboration. So great point. Okay, let's um, let's move to our uh, our next use case, and I'll click here on our project tab. So uh, certainly um, another area that uh, revenue recognition is, is definitely very key in is is in the area of professional services and in projects, and uh, this is actually going after uh, data that is part of our professional services automation tool, or, or PSA, uh, and being able to designate uh, how you wish to now recognize revenue for your projects. And 
the ability to set up uh, multiple levels, essentially, of revenue recognition. Um, I've got a couple of different examples here where if we take a look at uh, this first example, we'll see that I'm actually, we're actually doing uh, revenue recognition at the time card level. So in this case, um, where, you know, fixed price project, we're either billing up front or perhaps in installments, but of course we can only recognize the revenue as it is delivered. Uh, and being able to, uh, to indicate this and set this up, so as time is entered, in this case a couple of time card entries, uh, obviously we've delivered the uh, services at this point, and we have the ability to, uh, to recognize that revenue. The uh, three uh, other projects that I have all here are showing uh, at the project level and basing this on uh, a percent complete and being able to, uh, again, designate what uh, really what that percent complete is. Typically, it's, again, the amount of time that's been worked, but that, that definition is up to our, up to our customers to determine uh, what, what they determine percent complete is. Now, one level that actually not showing here is uh, part of uh, uh, my data that I have is also being able to do that at the milestone level. So uh, if you if you're, uh, have projects uh, and part of, uh, part of that setup is tracking milestones and when those are delivered, uh, or even a percent complete, being able to set up and create and do revenue recognition at that milestone level as well. So certainly being able to accommodate uh, any level of detail, in this case within, uh, within projects. And again, be able to have uh, all of that set up with the, with the appropriate uh, template and the methodology that you're using, whether it's, uh, as we see here, deliverable, percent complete, could be equal split. Uh, and at whatever level, whether it's at the overall project level, at a milestone level, or at a time card level and be able to, uh, to employ that methodology uh, with, in this case, our PSA application to be able to create those, uh, those revenue, uh, revenue transactions uh, for, uh, for your projects. And as we saw, uh, being able to, in this case, again, with our little, uh, on, the, on the very far, I think I've got some here on the time cards. Do I have any here set up? I haven't set any filters up, but the ability to, uh, to set up filters, again, I can drill into the details, and I can see for a particular project, again, in this case, uh, we can see here uh, in this uh, uh, particular view, uh, I've got my, uh, got my chatter feed showing. So as uh, Mike talked about, also having this as part is, in this case, reviewing uh, a particular project not only being able to see everything having to do just specifically with what's been set up from a revenue recognition standpoint, uh, where I can see the transaction history, uh, but now we can see uh, the chatter feed and what's happening just from an overall project standpoint. We've got documentation listed here. Uh, so again, being able to take advantage um, of this collaboration tool and, and really embed this as well, uh, not only on uh, whether it's on the project page itself, uh, but also here right within, right within revenue recognition. So really being able to have that complete picture of what's happening uh, from a project standpoint. And, and uh, I'll just, I, I would like to add to that, Claire, the, um, the, the customer use cases we've worked through with our customer base, um, oftentimes the decision about the recognition of the revenue doesn't reside exclusively with the domain of the project management and the service delivery people. The uh, finance and accounting people, the revenue management people have to make that determination. And some of the factors that could, um, could compromise the integrity of the revenue recognition in a given period can be found in that chatter feed. So while the project managers may say, yep, everything's fine, we've, uh, we, we've completed 45% of that project, that chatter feed could tell a different story. So um, it, it does give the revenue managers the ability to have full transparency into what's going on in the project and apply judgment determination that could, um, that, you know, that, that could impact what revenue, how much revenue you want to be recognizing. So again, 
being on this platform and having our applications integrated as part of the Salesforce platform uh, exposes those type of utilities to us. Um, you know, in addition, the the determination of what's percent, what percent complete is, uh, is entirely up to you. So some of our customers define that as hours uh, incurred over hours budgeted. Some of our customers want their project managers to go in and simply enter a percent complete and then substantiate that with documentation notes that get attached to the project. But all of that information is now visible to the revenue managers. So um, as we, when we drive, dive into one of those projects, Claire, if you would just click on that, that project. Yeah, for me. absolutely. That's, uh, I've, you must have read my mind, Mike. But he will go in and... Uh, So here actually now being able to go directly from um, our revenue recognition panel now into the details of the project. We can see at the top the chatter feed that we just saw as part of our um, kind of informational panel there and now being able to review and see everything about this particular project. I have a couple of sections open and highlighted obviously dealing with revenue recognition. So. Uh, looking at the details that, uh, that are within the, the scope of uh, the project detail record, but also being able to go in and review and uh, see whether it's, uh, you can look at uh, financial information, so, so what's happened in this case um, with the project so far, and look at project status, uh, project snapshots, uh, so really being able to, if need be, as you said, at many times it's, it's it's really a combination of not only the uh, professional services uh, side, but also the finance side in determining really what is uh, the appropriate uh, amount to, uh, to recognize at a given time. So now being able to provide that additional data very, very simply and easily um, just by uh, clicking into uh, to the project detail. So great point. And, and the data that you choose to expose here, so some of this revenue, recognized revenue information could be sensitive information and is only shared with certain roles and profiles within the organization. So <clears throat> while we can represent the data back on the project object this way from the revenue recognition engine, you have full flexibility in determining who has visibility to that. So maybe field level uh, project people, uh, consultants, they don't have access to the revenue recognition summary, but your service delivery directors, VPs, they would have visibility to it. So they don't need access to the accounting system to see what you've recognized for revenue. We can write that, push it back to the project and expose it to them there uh, without giving them permissions to have to get into the accounting books. So some very clever capabilities on the platform to use roles, profiles, and permissions using the uh, force.com security model to expose data to those people who need to see it and hide it from people who should not see it. Exactly. Probably more important than data they should see is data they should not be seeing, <laughs> as, I, as I usually like to say. So, uh, yeah, great point. Um, anything else, uh, Mike, before we move on to the next use case? No, I think that's a, that's a good summary on the projects. Okay, so last tab, this one is identified as, uh, as billing contract. and. This is actually um, a custom object that we've set up for demonstration purposes, uh, dealing with um, you know, contracts, subscriptions, et cetera, and uh, really emphasizing the fact that we can go after any data on the platform, whether it's uh, financial force objects, as we've displayed with both the sales invoice and the projects, but certainly any data. So um, as you've mentioned, Mike, we have a number of customers that have, in fact, created their own custom objects to house data uh, that they may use to create invoices or, in this case as well, to also do revenue recognition. And in addition, what um, I think is really significant about this particular example is, is the fact that it is a multi-element arrangement. So in fact, if we... Uh, probably go in and let me open up the actual uh, billing contract itself. I'll just hide the feed for now and we can take a look and I'll just bring up 
and show you the uh, uh, show the audience the, the different line items that this particular um, billing contract composes of. You'll see a variety of uh, license fees, professional services, uh, product fees, etc. And uh, as you see, if you kind of move over towards the right hand side uh, that we've done, uh, we not only have um, uh, the pricing, uh, the sales price um, for each of the line items, uh, but you'll see in this case we're doing an example of uh, BESP or best estimated selling price calculation to actually come up with that fair value allocation in order to do the revenue recognition. So whether this is uh, uh, using uh, the best estimated selling price or um, some of our customers using uh, uh, vendor specific objective evidence or VSOE, of course, what, we, what would we be without um, all these acronyms? <laughs> uh, but in our case, uh, uh, creating that calculation and then using that fair value amount, and if we go back and take a look at, expand it out here, our, um, uh, at our revenue recognition uh, line items expanded out, and we can see that in this case, uh, using a, a couple of different methodologies, equal split, as well as deliverable, depending upon uh, what that item happens to be, uh, and being able to uh, create, again, the, uh, the appropriate uh, revenue recognition amount uh, for each of those different line items. So being able to, uh, to support, again, whatever method you're using, uh, certainly uh, a very good example here, again, of a, a multi-element arrangement. Uh, if we, again, highlight and hover over our little eyes, we can see this was uh, fixed services, so this is services, so it's uh, uh, based on delivered, whereas both of these line items, this one should be our license fee, and uh, this is our, uh, yeah, our, another annual uh, uh, license fee as well, so those are being uh, determined uh, as an equal split. And something that we've certainly seen our customers uh, grappling with as far as being able to uh, Pull that, pull this data through. Uh, I think you said uh, again, Mike, in your in your overview that you know our ability to uh, go after the source data, no matter uh, where it is on the platform, and be able to leverage that, be able to always go back to that that source document as we did here with our uh, with our billing contract. Actually, review and see exactly uh, what that um, what that contract consists of to review if need be. Uh, any uh, invoices, we haven't created any invoices yet on, uh, on this particular one uh, that have been done, uh, but to be able to uh, then uh, create a control to select as need be to create our transactions, uh, to commit them uh, and process our revenue recognition very confidently that uh, it's being done the way in fact that we wish to have that set up. So again, going back to that, that secure environment, that control over what's happening, being able to define as appropriate the right methodology, and then have your complete audit trail all on platform uh, to be able to reference uh, uh, all the information. Yeah, and I would, uh, I would complement that by reinforcing the concept that the source data that we access, the revenue, revenue, revenue recognition engine accesses, is the, is the record of truth. So unlike an Excel model where you have to extract data, you're essentially replicating the information into another system, be it Excel. And a lot of other revenue recognition applications work the, in a similar fashion, fashion in that you have to extract the data, import it into their engine, and now you've got two versions of the truth. So what happens when the source data changes? Um, what if the contract term for one of those line items was really six months and not 12 months? At the inception, we got it wrong and recorded the contract wrong, and we're three months into it, and we find out, oh, it's only a six-month contract. When you go into our application, and, and essentially you're going to the source record, you're changing the subscription date on that source record. The next time the revenue recognition engine runs, it will detect that change. It will do a cumulative catch-up calculation, and it will record it in the current period. So um, the beauty of that is now you don't have to worry about making sure that change ripples through all the different layers of data that you've replicated to ensure that your uh, revenue recognition calculation 
reconciles back to the source data. And um, equally, we write that revenue recognition data back to the source object. So now we can calculate deferred revenue at a detail item level. So every element of that arrangement has deferred revenue associated with it. It has recognized revenue associated with it. So you can see the net deferred revenue at a line item level, run that report, reconcile it to your GL, and it will match to the penny. So sub subsidiary report listings of uh, the makeup of the deferred revenue in the GL will be fully supported by the source objects that that deferred revenue emanated from. And um, I've worked with several customers. Uh, we've implemented this model, and they just breathe a sigh of relief because they say at end of month now, they literally run a report, and that's their reconciliation. It takes them 30, 40 seconds to run the report. They look at it. It proofs out to the GL balance. No more chasing spreadsheet errors. No more chasing timing differences between source data and replicated data. Um, so the revenue recognition engine really, really provides a, a significant return on investment in terms of the resources that it takes to manage that. Um, and as Claire said, you know, we've uh, embracing that with the specific accounting controls that come with a sensitive area like revenue recognition. You know, it just gives you added benefit with that. Exactly. So true. Uh, just, just knowing that, uh, as you said, it's you're now dealing with a single source of truth, and and in also as you know. Uh, being able to, you mentioned reporting, being able to uh, also, I think I've got a quick dashboard up here I can, I can show, and with the uh, dashboard and uh, reporting capabilities that we're also able to take advantage of because we're built on the Salesforce platform, so being able to create those high-level views, in this case this is uh, pretty specific on the PSA side, we'll see by projects and uh, several dimensions below that, but being able to create dashboards, being able to uh, use the uh, delivered reports that we deliver as well as, of course, uh, take, take these, make changes, add your own as well. But uh, now you have a, a complete way of uh, making sure, as you said, that uh, all the data is all coming from one source, uh, being able to, uh, as need be, uh, deliver dashboards, uh, deliver reports, different, uh, uh, different users in the organization depending upon the level of detail that they need to see, uh, and all again coming from that same source of uh, the revenue recognition engine and uh, with the different transactions we can take a look at uh, a quick one that uh, was run. This is essentially the detail, so actually going in and being able to uh, run those transactions uh, and uh, then be able to have these again posted to uh, posted to the general ledger. So uh, certainly uh, bringing everything together on that single platform for the auditability, for the control, and, and as you said, for the ease of use and then the knowledge that uh, the information uh, is is coming directly from the source and no having going through that rekeying of data or even running an interface if, uh, if there's uh, even one available to be able to do that uh, uh, to create uh, the revenue recognition. That, that, uh, that's a great summary, Claire, of a, a couple of different use cases, different models of uh, how actual customers have implemented financial force rev rec for all from, the, from a simplistic view right through to a complex multi-element arrangement with best estimated selling price and fair value allocation associated with it. So uh, that was a that was a great summary. I hope our audience uh, was able to uh, gain benefit and insight and perspective on how financial force uh, can uh, can help complement your uh, your existing operations um, and uh, and implement some best practices for you as you uh, as you move forward. So with that, Ernie, I will uh, turn it back over to you. All right. Um, thank you very much. Um, just as a reminder for those of you, um, if any questions you'd like to have asked, please go to the questions area and you can go to webinar our control panel and we'll go ahead and um, kick off our uh, Q&A session. Um, first question, um, I'm going to direct them to Mike and this may have uh, kind of several parts to it because there are several uh, of the same types of questions. Um, so the first question um, is around um, the, um, the, the ability to work with, integrate with other systems. 
So the first part is someone's using financial force accounting and, and PSA, and so how do, can you say how those integrate, um, how the RevRec uh, module integrates with those systems? Sure. So uh, financial force accounting, PSA, are all force.com platform applications. Uh, the revenue recognition engine is a standalone platform application. Uh, it's built and designed to attach to any object data on the platform. So we use a publish and subscribe model where the business applications like financial force accounting and PSA publish information. So project information is published in PSA. Accounting sales invoice information is published in accounting. The revenue recognition engine subscribes to that source data and based on the methodology you want it to apply, it will do the requisite calculations. And it's never replicating data. It's always subscribing to the source data so that you know the revenue recognition engine is acting upon the, the, um, uh, the record of truth or the, the uh, permanent record associated with that transaction. So yeah, any, any application that runs uh, any business object data that lives on the platform we can attach to it and uh, and and um, recognize revenue. In addition to that, there's an application program interface with revenue recognition that we support. Mm -hmm. So our RevRec application can call out through web services to other third-party applications. If you had a SQL database where you were storing multi-element information, we can do call-outs to that uh, that data store and do the same thing: attach to the revenue, attach to the information and do our revenue recognition calculations via API web services. So it doesn't even need to be on the platform for our RevRec engine to see it and act upon it. Okay, great. Yeah, so just to confirm just some of the, the specific applications, people were curious about the integration capabilities. Um, one of them was ERP, one was contract management, and one was um, kind of time tool tracking. Can you speak to the, the, the integrability with those specific types of applications? Yeah, so um, for all three of those, uh, what, what we would do is work with you to get on to the level, the, uh, the record level detail where we're going to be able to get information. So for instance, on time cards, if we're doing uh, revenue recognition based on time delivered, I'll need to either see the total revenue amount calculated on that time card or the hours and the bill rate, and we can derive the revenue. Um, so there, there's a mechanism in the application where we can define what we call settings, and those settings instruct the engine where it will find the appropriate data. And that's all built with point and click. There's no programming, no coding that goes on there. You literally tell the system what fields of the time card. I'll find the hours, I'll find the rate, or the total revenue, the date of the time card. All of those fields are described to the settings object, which then knows how to go grab the information. Okay, great. Um, thank you very much, Mike. Next question um, I will direct um, to Claire. Um, in regards um, to the programming um, of the revenue recognition rules, can you speak to the flexibility um, that folks have um, on that side of things and, the, and if there are specific templates um, based on the, the common methods used and, and uh, so forth? Yeah, absolutely, Ernie. So um, kind of following uh, along uh, with what Mike was talking about with the settings is now that ability as we've determined the data that you want to go after is now being able to say, well, what's my methodology? Am I going to uh, you know, be recognizing revenue uh, e equally um, over months or days? Is it going to be based on percent complete? Uh, are based on uh, deliverable and being able to then you determine uh, exactly what that methodology is for each one of perhaps the, the different applications that you'll be recognizing the revenue against as we went through in our use cases for example the sales invoices were equal split uh, projects we were doing uh, some deliverable some percent complete and with our uh, multi-element arrangement billing contract uh, a variety as well. So that's completely up to uh, our customers to make that determination through the use. We have obviously pre-configured uh, methodologies, but then you would set up and create your templates as to exactly how you're going to be recognizing that revenue uh, appropriately in your organization. Okay, so just a follow-up question. So um, are you able to assign rules by 
by uh, product codes or product types, how, and how do people usually go about um, applying those rules if, if they have more than one methodology across their product space? It usually does end up being, um, you know, by, for example, whether it's going to be an annual subscription, might be equal split versus services, which are deliverable or percent complete. So uh, it's certainly, uh, again, depending upon uh, where the source state is coming from, the ability to set up and create those essentially defaults that will then flow down through to the details in the system. Okay, great. Um, thank you very much, Claire. Um, next question I will um, direct to Mike. Um, uh, once transactions are committed, is it possible to adjust the underlying RevRec structure? So the, the historical transactions when they're committed, like a journal entry posted to a ledger, are committed. You can't change those um, it, for, for audit trail purposes. However, the source data, the example I gave was um, we recognized revenue for a contract line item over 12 months. And the third month in, we, we understood that we had our contractual information wrong. It was really a six-month subscription or a six-month contract. They could make the change to the underlying object data to say, well, this contract line item is now six months, not 12 months. The next time the revenue recognition engine runs, it will do a cumulative effective change catch-up calculation in the current period uh, so as not to distort the historical data and your prior historical accounting periods. It will record that in the current period, and then the following subsequent months, it will resume a normal schedule of recognition based on a six-month time frame. Um, so yeah, we once it's committed, we don't let you change those committed source transactions, but you've always got the flexibility to go back and you can change the underlying um, term of a object item. You could change the revenue recognition method if you wanted to. So if we wanted to switch from a straight line to a deliverable base, you could do that. Uh, the system will flag it though, and it will leave a, a, a permanent record on that revenue recognition object item that the methodology was changed and who changed it. So it'll provide a full audit trail there. And, it, and of course, at, at the end of the day, those are all permissions that you grant. Nobody has that by default. You can grant them those permissions and you can restrict that type of activity from happening. So only the revenue managers would be able to make those types of adjustments or changes to objects based on objective information and uh, typically you know I strongly encourage that they that they uh, lock those types of permissions down so that uh, only the appropriate users are making those changes okay great um, thanks Mike next question I will um, direct um, to Claire can you maybe speak to some maybe some examples of, of how companies um, are doing audits in order to make sure that the uh, rules uh, are being applied properly or as they intended them to be applied in, on the reporting side? Uh, yes. Um, you know, with a combination of not only the revenue recognition control panel where essentially all the details are there and laid out, and then um, as you saw a couple of different times being able to uh, quickly get back to that uh, the, the source data. So to look at a project, to look at an invoice or a contract to make sure that all the uh, the appropriate details are at the source data to be able to through either dashboard or reporting to run and, and get uh, additional information from the system as a whole but be able to certainly uh, give access as need be uh, to that source data to be able to get at and see exactly uh, what the uh, the methodology that's being used and uh, to audit that if it if in fact uh, is appropriate. Okay, great. Um, thanks, Claire. Next question. Um, I'll address to Mike. Um, I believe you mentioned that the permissions on the RevRec uh, financial force are configurable. Um, can you just give us a little bit more color on 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 how detailed um, that, that you can go down into configuring those those permissions? Sure. The um, <clears throat> the interesting thing is the permission model that we employ is the same permissions model that is employed at the Salesforce level. So if you're using Salesforce today, your Salesforce administrator already knows how to employ these permissions. Uh, they're just essentially identifying the fields on our objects, our revenue recognition objects, or the source objects that revenue is being recognized against. And they can apply the and model the permissions 
uh, at a very granular level, right down to the field level on those uh, on those business objects. So, um, you know, one of the uh, you know again one of the benefits of us being on the platform, Claire showed you those nice rich dashboards, the chatter feed, the security permission model. We're using the standard platform, Salesforce platform permissioning engine, dashboard engine, chatter engine, all of those services uh, as a core component of our application. So your administrators, if you're using Salesforce today, already know how to build revenue recognition reports and how to manage and change our RevRec reports because they're just standard uh, Salesforce objects. Uh, and, and the same with the permission model. So it's very granular. Um, you could have five different users that have five different roles, and when each of them accesses that revenue recognition information, they would see different information on their screens, and you could limit those roles so that um, you could build a, a really nice segregation of duties model to make sure that through an approval chain and through a, a process model, uh, people who are responsible for revenue management see and approve only the parts of the uh, elements of the arrangements and the object data that they're responsible for governing. Um, so, yeah, you can get right down to the field level on all of that data that you saw on those screens. Okay, great. Um, thanks, Mike. Next question on the direct declare. Can you speak generally to how Financial Force um, um, handles revenue recognition in terms of different currencies? Uh, yes, and I think I even uh, briefly pointed it out on my uh, uh, on the uh, revenue recognition uh, control panel that, that there was a uh, drop down for currency. So, as a as as an application set, Financial Force, uh, whether it's accounting or PSA or revenue recognition, supports a multi currency environment. So again, the source transactions being in that uh, in their home currency. Uh, the ability to create uh, those uh, uh, and specifically revenue recognition transactions uh, with the uh, the currency uh, that's representative of the of the uh, of the actual uh, source that we're pulling from. Okay, great. Um, thank you very much. Um, final question before I close out the Q and A um, will be I'll direct this to Mike. Mike, um, what what's coming next in terms of um, the functionality in terms of financial force revenue recognition or even perhaps another um, financial force um, application? So um, financial force is uh, you, you, we're uh, bringing along these applications quite quickly. As I said earlier, one of the things we enjoy is the ability to build specific functionality without having to worry about underlying architecture, security models, uh, database scalability. That's all given to us for free by being on the platform. Uh, revenue recognition is in its second iteration, so we're currently on version two. Version three is coming out shortly, which is going to include revenue forecasting, so creating true waterfall models of your revenue and the revenue recognition scheduling and comparing that uh, forecasting against actuals to give you a better perspective of what's happening in your business. Um, and as well, the other, the, the remaining set of the ERP applications, we undergo two releases uh, per year, and um, each of those releases embraces, you know, extensive new functionality. So it's a young product that's growing rapidly. We're adding great functionality across our ERP platform, and uh, really terrific functionality specifically in our revenue recognition application. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, thank you very much, Mike. I'll go ahead and conclude the Q&A session, and we will coordinate with our speakers in getting answers to any questions we did not um, get to during the webinar today. A big thank you to Mike and Claire for their time and insights. They're clearly thought leaders and excellent source of information on today's topic. Note in the post-webinar survey, you'll be asked to take what after the webinar concludes. You'll have the opportunity to express your interest in being connected with today's speakers with just a few mouse clicks. Um, I'd like to thank again our sponsor, FinancialForce.com, who's with the thought leadership helps helped us make this webinar possible. And finally, a big thank you to the audience uh, for your valuable time. Make the rest of your day great, everyone. Thank you very much.